Hey everybody, welcome to today's Whiteboard Wednesday. Remember that last sale that you made where you didn't run into an objection? It's kind of tough, right? Of course it is. Well, because we all know that selling doesn't really start until we run into an objection. So that's what we're gonna focus on in today's Whiteboard Wednesday. Objections. In sales, there's something we hate hearing, but if we're honest with ourselves, we realize that in order to sell effectively, objections are something we have to hear during a sales cycle. The reason being is objections allow us to get an idea of what our customer or our prospect is feeling internally, and ultimately, the objection itself is really just them trying to rationalize the decision. And so if we're not hearing any objections, if everything seems to be going according to plan and they're lovey-dovey and it's what we call happy ears, those are the sales cycles that tend to draw out or worse yet, fall off the table and we never got an idea of why they went in a different direction. So for five steps here, what we're gonna focus on overcoming objections. Our first step, we need to learn to love objections. And in fact, we have to seek them out. So what we wanna do, love the objection, and seek it out. In order for us to be effective here, getting an objection is a good thing. We want to be going out and seeking those objections. In fact, Gong did an interesting study here and found that the longer the sales cycle goes on, the more negative sentiment you should be getting from your prospect. And so again, that's helping them rationalize the decision. They're becoming emotionally invested in the purchase. So if we're not getting those objections as a good sales rep, we should start trying to seek them out. Start laying some common objections that you get from your prospects throughout the sales cycle. Again, that's gonna help them feel like you know what you're doing, you've been down this road, you have their best interest in mind, and it isn't just all positive. There's some concerns they should have in mind and how you can help address them. Our second step, we want to listen and we need to empathize. This is a big one. In order for us to be effective uh, with our, our objection handling, we can't just steamroll the prospect. We have to listen to the objection, and then we have to offer some sort of empathy. All too often, if you think about it, you probably have all sorts of battle cards in your arsenal, right? How you compare to a competitor, how you differentiate, why your perceived price point is too high, or why that feature that you lack should be minimalized, it shouldn't be a decision maker. Uh, the big piece here is that we can't just start getting into the product zone, vomiting product on us. What that does is it makes us feel combative. Uh, it makes the prospect feel like you're minimizing their concerns, that it shouldn't be a concern. And worse yet, if they already have an incumbent vendor and you start to bash that and tell them why it shouldn't be a concern of theirs, all you're doing is you're attacking their previous decision. It's something that, hey, they stuck their neck out once, they invested in that solution, and now you're saying it was the wrong decision. So really what we need to do is we need to listen to the objection. We need to understand why it's important to them. We need to offer empathy. I completely understand that's a valid concern. I hear it often. Here's how I can help you overcome that. As we do that, our third step here, and this is another big one, we need to ask questions. More often than not, the surface objection that we get isn't the real objection. Your price is too high. That can mean several different things. Your price is too high relative to competitors that I've looked at. I haven't yet understood the value you're bringing to the table and why that price point is different. Maybe it just might be something as uh, your price is too high, but in reality, we're in the middle of Q3. I don't have much money to spend right now and my budget doesn't refresh until next year. So it might just be a payment term thing that they're trying to rationalize. So the idea here is to ask the right questions, get your prospect to verbalize their objections and dig deeper to find the real objection. Uh, all too often, again, that surface objection that you're getting it isn't the main concern. It's just something for them to, that's easy to get off their chest. And so your job is to ask the right questions find the real objection, and then reframe. So that's our fourth step. We want to reframe their objection um, and, and tell a compelling story around how you've helped somebody here. Reframe the way they're viewing that objection and why it maybe perhaps isn't the right way of thinking or shouldn't be their major concern. 
The reframe here, one great technique, is to use what's called client voice. Tell a compelling story of another prospect that had that same concern, they raised that objection, you listened to it, you understood a way to help them, you can walk them through, hey, here's the unique ideas that we came up with, maybe it'll help you as well, and then ultimately the payoff, since that prospect eventually made that leap and invested in your solution, let's talk about the return and the value you're getting and the reason why they invested more in your solution than another step and how that difference in investment has been dwarfed by the return they've seen. So those are some of the best practices there in our reframe. Now, lastly, our fifth step here, check the box, we want to validate. In order for us to um, fully overcome the, the objection, we need to take a step back. We need to validate that we heard the objection properly, that we overcame it for the prospect, and now that they're comfortable with um, us moving forward. We're comfortable with the fact that, yes, you had this concern, this concern is no longer a concern for me, and we're at a point where we can move forward. Now, some additional tips here and pro tips. One thing that we like to do, especially in the validate stage here, is what's called going for the no. So go for no. You might get into a position where your prospect still has this objection. You didn't do the right thing. You didn't do a good enough job overcoming the concern. And they sort of still harbor that, that lingering objection. What we can do here is go for the no. So John, I completely understand that the cost here and the difference in cost between us and the next best solution out there is $10,000. But if you recall back to what we talked about prior, where you needed to grow sales by 40%, that's a board mandate. Is that something you're no longer committing to doing? Are you no longer committing to get 40% return for the board and grow sales year over year due to the $10,000 difference? Should we just call it quits now? And the idea here is to get them to say, no, my objection is not a deal breaker. And this can be done several different ways. There's obviously a lot of different scenarios, but one of those ways, uh, especially when it comes to price, is to sort of minimize perhaps the difference in cost or minimize the, the investment cost because we're focused on the total value. Lastly here, um, this is what one of our, our, our head of sales enablement, Dave Sill, he talks about in his session, emotional intelligence. We want to be able to, to reframe and establish this idea of, of your self-confidence, right? You've got to be able to be at a point where you're ready to walk away from this, you know, or at least show that, uh, hey, I'm willing to walk away. And this is where sort of that go for the no comes in. You know, you have to reframe and, and get the prospect to realize that, look, it's not what happens to me if we don't move forward. It's what happens to you if we don't move forward. Are you okay with status quo if you don't invest in, in our solution? Are you okay with potentially less return by investing in a lesser alternative? So those are some of the techniques there you can use for, uh, for going for the no. Now, as you do this more and more often, you're probably gonna get to a point where you realize that, hey, I'm getting the same objections all the time. It's the same three to five objections. I hear it on every call. It doesn't matter the size of the prospect here. Now, what you can do in this stage is once you start to get more comfortable overcoming these objections, once you get a handle on what those objections are, the ability for you to now um, own the objection. By owning the objection, what this gives you the ability to do is raise it before the prospect has a chance to raise it. By taking the power away from the prospect owning the objection or the prospect voicing the objection, you're now in control. And again, if we look back and talk about where we talk about loving and seeking objections, if you're not getting those objections, this is a great way to own the objection. Put the objection out there for the prospect. So uh, it might go something like this. You know, hey, Nancy, I completely understand. Uh, it sounds like we've got a great fit here. Oftentimes, though, what I hear at this point from prospects is they're trying to wrap their head around how do we institutionalize this solution? How do we make sure our team uses it? The last thing anybody wants to do, you included probably, is invest in a solution, you know, spend $50,000 on something that just becomes shelfware, right? Is that something that you're worried about? 
Yes, Steve, it, it is. Well, great. Look, you know, we have this fantastic customer success team here. You know, investing in your success is something that, that we're committed to doing. The last thing we want, especially as a software as a service solution, is to have this be shelfware. So that's a, just a quick example of how that might play out. But by owning the objection, by voicing it and raising it before your prospect has a chance to, what it does is it's no longer uh, enabling them to stand behind that objection. They're not deeply rooted in this feeling of, this is my concern, I own this concern, and he's just trying to change my mind. Again, this is where you can be really consultative. You're showing that I've walked this road. These are some concerns you should have. And here's how together we're gonna overcome them. We're gonna get you the best of breed of platform, and this is gonna be a big win for you. So with that, these five steps and a couple of bonus tips here. Hopefully you've gotten some value today in today's Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, feel free to drop some comments uh, in the section below. If you've got a great technique, we'd love to hear it. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.